Hey, Spuddies, Potato Big Whiskey here, and welcome back to Let's Play Civ 6 as Japan in the three or more adjacency only challenge. Now, here's the thing a samurai timing attack is super based, but I just don't have enough information as to whether or not it's going to work. The big problem is if the Inca had like the Maori science and culture, it would be way more viable for me to do this. But he's just going to unlock like musket men or he's already going to have crossbowmen. I don't know which end of the tech tree he's on. I can't see enough about him. If I can maybe gather a little bit more info, I think we can make a decision on whether or not we're going to do a samurai timing attack. It's unlikely. I would, I would say the odds are against a samurai attack as it currently stands, but it doesn't mean it's impossible. Now, we also want to pick up Liang here, and that's because we're about to pick up feudalism, which means all of our builders will gain plus two build actions. And so uh, we're also going to want to do this and pre-build some builders rather than be building some settlers. Now, realistically, I can afford to upgrade like maybe three warriors so we can do this but we also want to have builders close to completion in every single one of these cities for the advent of feudalism it's because we can build them really really efficiently although i really should finish the harbor in takamatsu uh, all things considered but yeah i reckon if i could have maybe th a, th a three samurai timing attack might do something here uh, do you know what i really uh, i'm not so sure I just really am not so sure a samurai timing attack is going to do anything here. It's really something you have to commit to fairly early. And I've been mostly kind of higgledy-piggledy making my way around. I don't even have an encampment. I don't even have a great general. Like, you definitely would want those things if you're doing this. I think I will trade with Bandar Brunei because that's worth 12 gold. That's a really darn good trade route. What's going on with Coupe down here? Just Coupe constantly being a thorn in someone's side. Now, Coupe, on the other hand, a, a samurai timing attack on Coupe is definitely possible. Let's go ahead and sell this sugar off the Chang Dragupta. He'll take that. There just isn't enough loyalty pressure over here. Maybe. It's very close to India. In India is definitely a target for a samurai timing attack, however. Let's go ahead and pop this down here and immediately get that iron. So this is again kind of changing my perspective on this. Make sure we cancel those builders before they finish because we want them for feudalism. Uh, let's see. India, on the other hand, might be like that might be prime meat right there, ready to be claimed by samurai. And they're relatively cheap and inexpensive. On the other hand, it would be just as valid for me to do a caravel timing on them at a slightly later timing. Right. There's a plus three harbor. We could place that down in Osaka. I'm, I'm not sure. Do I want the harbor first or do I want the monument first? I do feel like monuments are just so good. They give you just so much value over the course of a game. The city doesn't really have any good tiles to grow to, to however. It's a 13 turn delay. It's a 60 production delay on getting my trade route in this city. Yeah, let's go harbour. Let's skip monuments. A rare monument skip game. Pamukkala has been found. Very cool. I, oh, it's over here in Namadal. So Namadal will get obliterated. So we are going to want to resurrect them later. And I did manage to get suzerainty of them. So for a very brief amount of time, I managed to pull in some culture. I'm kind of annoyed at that. Okay. There is potential here. I, d I definitely feel like India is a very, very easy target for a samurai timing. Now, I will have to go like a very awkward path around India to get to him. That's the problem. If there was a channel through this water, it'd be a lot easier. So I might have to make some suboptimal plays here. Yeah, Nan Madal died, which was expected. Amani is idle. I'm just going to throw her into Mitla for now. Although, wait, I'm already Susan of Mitla. Yeah, so I'll throw her into Bandar Brunei for now. We will assign Liang to Fukuoka. I don't have any more builder or governor charges. Preslav, nice to meet ya. You have encampment loyalty, but I'll take that plus one production off you. I, India is looking very attackable here. I'm going to be totally honest with you. India looks like easy pickings with a few galleys. A few galleys and a few samurai. We crack this nut right open. I reckon. So let's commit fully to the plan. Change our production. Get rid of Ilkum. Get rid of veterancy. We're going to plug in equestrian order so we get extra iron. We're also going to plug in a gog so we produce warriors faster. Oh no, I need to be able to produce galleys faster. That's what I'm missing. I'm missing galley production. I need to change my government to oligarchy. Yes, I'm going to switch to oligarchy. I can't actually change my cards this turn. I don't know what I've done there. I, th I feel like I've broken a game. Ah, here we go. Right. Yes. Okay. So, hear me out. 
We want urban planning. We want equestrian orders. We want a GOG, but we also want, where is it? Uh, maritime industries. We want to be able to build galleys. God, I want to finish this lighthouse so bad. It's such a good building. But I need a horde of galleys, like a literal horde um, to provide combat adjacency here. Like I need to put a I need to put a galley on like most of these coastal tiles and I need to find out more information about India. I think we can do a, a samurai timing attack on India. I think it'll work out too. Now, how many warriors should I get? I will be able to buy a little bit of iron off of Babylon. So I think I could support quite a few more warriors. I may as well just pre-build as many warriors as I can before I unlock samurai. And maybe I could switch away to something cheap. Yeah, I could switch to mysticism real quick. Classical era ends in one turn. We did not get the golden age. Very sad. If I had built a samurai, I would have got my golden age. It would have been the four points. We got really, really close, to be fair. And it wasn't like I didn't try. I did make an effort to get a golden age here. I just, I didn't get the pasture. I, I, you know, just not quite enough tempo. If I'd met a few more sieves, if I'd maybe gone scouting a little bit earlier, I should have maybe popped out galleys a little bit sooner. A few mistakes, but nothing major just kind of like missed the mark by a little bit or golden ages for the first two eras can be quite tough on deity um unless you have an easy map to explore oh yeah this definitely looks invadable i do still think free inquiry is still the right choice in terms of dedication but we are in the medieval era and we're in a normal age we're looking relatively okay i'm going to switch away to like mysticism for a turn and then switch back to feudalism maybe i can sneak out another oh you want to oh, no, you want to buy my iron no I need iron. Iron is what I need. Make units cheaper with production. This would be huge for my war effort. Amazing. So units are cheaper. Now the problem is the AI... So the problem with that resolution is the AI gets... How do I describe this? The AI gets a double my production. So if units are half price, they're now getting quadruple my production. I am getting double myself, but I think it's a little bit more valuable for them because it means they have a unit... They'll be more often cranking out units. There's no iron available for purchase at all. He must have used some. Yeah, he did. Right. I will take Susan to your Preslav. A, for scouting information. And B, for the potential levy here. Yeah, the swordsman levy would be huge. Oh, man. Is this really where you spawned? That's a really unfortunate spawn for India. This is a really interesting map, though. Ice Island. That's a really unlucky for India to spawn here. But it's a really good opportunity for me. And I'm going to take it. It is kind of one of the downsides of this map script that I'm using is that some, it, it can generate relatively unfair maps, which kind of sucks. Now, my question is, can you upgrade units inside of city-states tiles? I'm pretty sure you can. So I could pre-send some units over there. I never got shipbuilding, so that's completely off the cards <laughs> until I have shipbuilding. Ooh, we could attempt to restore Nan Madal. I mean, I kind of have the military for it. It would give me a reason to go to war with the Inca it's a little bit early for the war that's the only issue is that it's a little early it's a little bit early but you know what let's try and force it through anyway it probably won't go through people will vote it down but if it does go through then we've got potential because now we've got allies now we've got skin in the game from other people right I think I can get this kill pretty easily there you go oligarchy's a big help I do have to worry about my cities. I think I can squeak out one more pre-built warrior. And that'll be the last one I can justify, I think. This is great scouting info. And look, Maori, the Maori are here. Although he can embark. Now, can he embark because he earned a great person? Or can he embark because he has cartography? Ooh, he can embark because he has cartography. That's really bad. That's game over for me, actually. I think in that in this war, this might have to switch to just hardcore ecoing. Now, where would I like my diplomatic quarter to be built? Probably nowhere because my priority should be settlers. Right, there's feudalism, samurai in the tank. Ah, uh, I never researched ironworking. You need ironworking to upgrade to samurai. Yep, 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 yep. We're working on it. Now, my question is, I'm pretty sure that i'm pretty sure i don't give adjacency bonuses to the maori if i'm near them when they're fighting because i'm not their ally but yeah let's yoink mercenaries for retinues and professional army this will make it much cheaper to do a samurai upgrade wave it will basically double the amount of samurai we can get we're going to keep maritime industries plugged in as well as equestrian orders because we want to keep samurai production high but i think i'm also going to plug in settler production colonization so that i can kind of backfill my economy here i think that's going to be important for my long-term sustainability 
Quad dry reams are available, so we will start to produce them. And we can now enter units into the water, which I will start doing for one very, very simple reason. Uh, and that's because boats get support bonuses from military units in the water. So you want to have your army in the water if you're doing any sort of conquest here. You could see this galley has plus two flanking bonus, but when it's being attacked, it'll have plus like six or seven or something like that. Uh, or eight it'll be just way more powerful so we want to pick up kills where we can these are cheap and free kills it gets me experience it doesn't leave me too vulnerable like there's a free kill right there and the quads will do the work of clearing the shores ideally but we do have to worry about these um catapults they can do a number on these galleys most of my army's in the water now playing relatively well question is are, will more galleys actually help me out in this war and i don't think the answer is yes I can place my plus three campus at long last. I still don't think, I think the lighthouse now makes the right choice. It's 30 turns. You know what, more quads. Just get as many quads out as possible because that's what I need to actually sweep the shores clean. I don't think smashing galleys into his cities will make a difference here. No, it won't. Not without a great admiral. We're quite a bit away from a great admiral, unfortunately, because we don't have our lighthouses. I hate that I don't have my lighthouses. I might have to dip back for them, although I'm kind of caught in being forced to produce quads right now i could buy my lighthouse and then buy the associated trader and i will because that is just such a huge gold boost that makes my life so much easier it gives me tons of housing allows the city to grow okay yeah th th that was the right choice i think let's finish military tactics it would be good to have apprenticeship so there's the first man at arms which is the equivalent unit that we'll be attacking with and there's the first caravel which is quite a bit more powerful than my units. However, I'm in a really, really strong muscle position. And a muscle is when you have really, really good flanking and defensive bonuses. Um, so my muscle right now is quite strong. I'm very, very good on the defense. So he'll have a hard time attacking into me, even if he is a tech ahead. This does kind of make me want to move away from naval military production, though, pretty heavily, at least until I can get my own caravels. 15 turns so this trade route could go across the open ocean and get 12 gold here but i think i would rather trade with bandar brunei because it's a little bit more of a safe trade route i have a bit better control over these waters even if there is like quadri reams running down there jesus look at the damage on that caravel now if this thing loops around it'll be annoying um we should be fine first quadri ream is out we're getting to work on harbors and harbors so i could upgrade upgrade samurai but they'll cost twice as much as they should so i'm going to hold off on that the samurai push will come. It's just we're, we're war prepping right now. We're posturing. Now there's two caravels out. Okay, he's slowly picking apart my muscle, but that's fine. My muscle is still pretty strong from these angles. I don't want to be attacking. I want to be defending. Jesus, I never even got, a I never even got time to build a mausoleum in Fukuoka. It's just not going to happen there. It, it, unfortunately, it's going to be a mausoleum list with game. Just because of the position I'm in. Yeah, there's those attacks, right? So the caravels are coming in, but you can see they actually took pretty decent counterattack damage because I'm pretty well positioned with this muscle here. This huge muscle of units. And now I'm getting my own promotions to where counterattacking isn't viable, but attacking into me is even less viable. Right, let's do... Uh, we're going to pop out equestrian orders and maritime industries for a single turn, ideally. We'll plug in professional armies as well as retinues. Boom. And then we'll do a wave of samurai upgrades. Now, they're only 15 combat strength in the water, but out of the water, they're 48. 15 combat strength in the water is really bad, actually. But we can do a lot of samurai upgrades this turn. Uh, we got one, two, three, four, five samurai this turn. And we should be able to get another one next turn. Can I sell anything off for raw gold? There's a little bit of raw gold. Boom, samurai. I'm sitting on an envoy. Let's put another point into Preslav purely so I can levy them in the near future. I want to make sure that I have good, strong. These man-at-arms here would be super helpful to push into Inca. So that's going to be what my gold is going to be used for in the next little while. I'll be looking to sell things if I can. Literally anything for raw gold. Like there's 355 gold. I'm halfway to levying this. Get a full group of, a full complement of five man-at-arms to hit them with from another angle let's see what this caravel does okay he retreated the caravel now we will get major victories if we push forward slightly the problem i have is that i have to push very aggressively into the unknown let's just take a tentative step forward i hate that this maori galley is here because it's really a problem but my samurai can attack up into 
the coastline pretty effectively. I don't like that I'm isolating these guys, but I think I might have to bring the samurai forward. This is a little bit of a problem. I'll buy an archer in here. This will help deal with this. And I'll bring this archer up to help deal with it as well. But I need to be focused on the attack, not on the defense. I think you always lose on the defense if you focus on it. All right, the samurai are up. There's no walls in Nan Madal. I feel like my samurai are stronger than basically everything that he has. The only thing I'm majorly missing would be a great general. In theory, I could buy one. The problem is it's a classical. I mean, classical works, actually. I'd need a thousand gold. Do I want a great general or do I want Preslav's levy? I think we're going to have to pray for some pillages here for some extra cash. It looks like there might be unoccupied land to the north of me as well. Yeah, look at them. They're attacking me, but they're taking severe damage. You kill. Can you get that kill? I need to get the kill on this chariot. You need to get up. You need to fall back to a safe distance. You need to batter him. Okay. We've managed to land Samurai, at least, on Nan Madal. And they are starting to promote. And we've got, like, enough tiles to do damage here, at the very least. This might actually work, weirdly enough. Be very surprised. This carvel will be key to whether or not it works. Drop a city. There's Nanangu for adjacency. Um, this city's just going to have to suffer for a while. I'll have to look at it. I'll have to look after it later. The war effort is kind of more important. Right. Now he's bringing in new caravels. You can step up. You can take his position. I'm going to move you back and put a quad in here. And the quad can start pecking at the way at the city. Not peckering. Pecking. <laughs> That's a different thing. That's a reference to my Canada series. Oh yeah, I was supposed to do... Now, here's the real question. Do we just start throwing samurai at Nan Madal to win the emergency? I think there's something to be said for doing that. The big problem with winning this emergency is that it's going to kick my units out into the into chaos. It'll give me suzumty of Nan Madal, but at what price is the real question. And the price will be high. I don't want to pay it. Oh man, he just killed three of his units on my samurai. Incredible. So we need to hide this quad there. The quad is hidden. Pepper the city. You step away. You're supposed to promote. You step this way. You come on up. Attack. 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 Low roll, but we could kill it next turn. What is embark strength based on? That's my question. I think it's like your strongest... Naval unit minus 20 or something. There's some calculation to it and I don't know what it is. But minus 15, which is way too low because they can one-shot me. All right, 100 gold for selling sugar to you. I'm selling Diplo Favor literally every single turn because I just need to get this. Oh, 865. This, like, if I can get these men at arms, it changes the war. Can you get this kill? Very nice. Now, here's the question. Nan Madal is really damn good. What's the loyalty like in here? Minus 6.5. We could possibly hold the loyalty in here. It also has access to the Pamakala. It's built no districts. Um, and it would provide me with a base, a land base, to push in here. As much as I want to liberate Nan Madal here, I think the opportunity to keep pushing is so juicy that I'm going to keep it. I I hate this. I wish I could liberate it like later. But I need to keep it for now so I can punish the Inca before his science goes too crazy. Now the alternative thing I could do here, which is totally viable, is I take this on the chin. I liberate Nan Madal. I piece him out. I take that plus one gold per envoy to the bank. Be very happy with that. And then expand up into this like area over here and play for a late game naval domination. That would be what I would that would be what I would call the sensible play. But I don't feel too sensible today. Okay? I'm feeling a little frisky. I'm feeling like I need to take some risks with this game right now. So let's do it. Let's grab a Manny and slap her into the newly captured city. We do have positive loyalty. We're going to keep it. And we're going to keep pressing on. This is already turning out to be one of the most interesting games I've ever played. Now. An important question. Can we surround this with enough shit to kill him? It would be a very costly victory, but I think we can kill this caravel. Cost me a lot of health, but we killed a caravel. That's a huge win in my books. Do you know what, man? 
For the very rare times that Pamukkala spawns adjacent to water, you should still get the plus extra adjacency if you put a harbour there. Come on, look at that. Can you imagine? It'd be like a plus seven or six or seven harbour. So the nice thing about Pamukkala is it does give extra adjacency, which actually works out really nicely for me here, for me here this game. Because I kind of need that. Like if I were to build my harbour right there on this tile, I could build a holy site right there. And that just seems like the right way to do things. I need to change my government as well. Any cheap things I can research? I'm going to research drama and poetry just for the government reset. And then I can reset my government to something a little bit more useful. Okay, so yeah, <laughs> we failed. <laughs> the emergency was failed because I killed Nan Madal. <laughs> I'm sorry. It had to happen. It was necessary, okay? Necessary violence. Okay, we've got a lot of our fleet healing. I think... I think I need some reinforcements. But I won't start doing that until drama and poetry. I definitely need a traitor. These archers are doing really good work protecting my cities. Um, they've killed like two two uh, catapults that were coming up here to kill Osaka. So that turned out great for me. So my worry here is, here is that I'm not committing enough to the war. I might be being greedy. So let's go ahead and grab all that cash and immediately levy Preslav. Just so that you guys understand that I'm committing to this war. I know I'm not building military to back up this war, but by the time, like, like if I were to build a samurai in my capital, right? It would take six turns. Six turns before it gets over here, it can make a difference. That's an eternity. I think I would be better off settling and playing for the late game aircraft play. So I'm really looking forward to getting these mad at arms reinforcements in. I've got a lot of samurai in the water. We've, we're surrounding the city. You do need to promote bombardment helps. Now, which w I think the man at arms have to go this kind of crappy route. I do have open borders with India, which helps a little. Why's my military score out? It's looking pretty juicy. Okay, we took a pretty big slap there on that quadrium. I don't think the quad can stay in support. I think it's got to retreat. And there is another caravel somewhere in the fog of war. I know for a fact, or at least I did see one get made. Okay, I need to make sure my samurai are on coastal tiles so they're well defended. Let's bring the navy in. Um, any city-states that are important to me? It would be nice to take back Mitla. It's kind of annoying. Yeah, there we go. We broke them. So this is a game changer. The city is under siege. Let's begin slapping it. I think that's the right play. Now, damage we do on this city is essentially permanent. I don't think it makes sense to slap with the galleys, though. Um, because they're going to be turned into caravels soon. So I want to do everything in my power to preserve them. Preserve their health. Preserve their lives. Okay, you took a little bit more damage than I was hoping for. But you're now protected by a galley. There is a little bit of an amphibious attack penalty, but now all of these guys are secured. Get that kill. Swap these guys. I need to swap him out to get healed. Do the damage. Do the damage. We're, we're close to breaking a city here. I could all in with my galleys. Nope. Just slow and steady. Slow and steady. We don't need to win this war this turn. Take it, just tap it in, nice and easy, nice and cheesy. So in terms of tier two government, I think Merchant Republic is just a no brainer for me. It uh, unlocks press gang so I can actually build caravels at a re reasonable rate. And so for that reason alone, like I'll, I'll, I'll take that. There was another reason I wanted a thousand gold and I think it was to get a classical era great general. If I could actually get this, it would be huge. I need 1100 gold. I sell off this Diplo favor. I can get 480. Oh, this is huge. This is huge. Oh my God. That's going to give another plus five combat strength to all of these samurai. That is massive. I, I know I say it's a game changer all the time, but it really is. What just happened is a massive game changer. We captured another city. Now, unfortunately, we are going to have to grab Liang here and pop her into the city. This one's going to be a little bit harder to hold in terms of loyalty. We could liberate it to the Maori, but I'm going to keep it. Oh, the samurai timing attack meta is now. Where is your god now? So what do we got? We have ancient walls in here. Um, we're going to want to buy a battering ram. This is the power of having a really strong economy, by the way. You can shift the gears of your economy very, very quickly. Where's our harbor? I think a plus four. I'll take a plus four. A lot of these guys need healing, but that's okay. We're on coastal land, so we're in just like, we're in perfect muscle territory. Look at all this muscle we have. And now I describe muscle as when you have a bunch of units, like all together, giving each other support bonuses. That's what I consider to be a muscle. Because every time you, like, they're all like 
combining together and helping each other. You know, ape, ape together stronger, ape stronger together or ape together strong, whichever way he says it in the movie. That's the play we're going for. We're going for the ape play. And now the wave of men at arms have arrived to take Opango and we can focus our efforts on Machu. Oh yeah, look how desperate they are for counterattacks. That's fine, that's a choice you can make. India, you cretin. Let me in. India, let me in, India. hey oh, <laughs> It wasn't even a pun, it was just stupid. <laughs> uh, you can step out. You step up to heal, you step up. You go there. There is a farm here we could pillage. Now this might be where the book stops. At the very least, we can take up Hango and then translate that into a war with India and hold the eastern side of this empire, you know, by hostage, essentially. But we've got choices. We're, we're in a position of, I wouldn't describe it as strength, but we're definitely not in a weak position. Oh, yeah, right. We've got our, we've got our great general here. It's going to be huge. Look at that. Plus, look at that. Look at that. 61 combat strength samurai. Now, that's what you like to see. You definitely like to see that. Hey, what the hell are you doing? Get the hell out of here. I don't, even, I don't even care that I don't even have my own religion. I'm just, you're my enemy, so I'm killing your missionary. It's as far as I thought. Plus five harbor in Tokyo. God, I, I, I kind of wish I'd went for, went for Ancestral Hall now. Because I've gone for so many settlers. But I, I, think, I think it's fine, the build that I've done. At the very least, I think it's kind of paying off. Because like, I've managed to capture like two cities. I will get this one. This one is nearly guaranteed. Oh, no, military emergency. I sold off all my Diplo favor. It failed. Amazing. It's not where I clicked. I literally look, it was, this unit was here on this amber and I clicked here and it went onto this tile. How did you enter? This is like a Mobius unit right here. These units are connected and infinitely uh, entwined. Um, so what can I sell? Yeah, give me a bit of cash. Sell off that, grab ourselves a battering ram. And now, now, we're, now it really depends. What's our combat strength against the city looking like? Okay, it's looking like a major defeat. What about with the Great General? Still a major defeat. So we'll have to see how we do with the battering ram and unit cycling and whatever else shenanigans we can pull. But once these guys leave the coast... Well, I've got all my samurai embarked. So I think I prepare my caravels to swing around to the north and start popping all these cities. So let's get them in that kind of a direction. We're definitely continuing the trade with Bandar Brunei. That's 19 gold on a trade route. That is absolutely pogged. You can't move. Why are you asking me for orders? No, I'm just gonna have to shift enter, end my turn. My unit is stuck there. It like kicked out their other units. That was kind of weird. There's like some kind of bug with that tile. Okay, his knight killed himself by attacking me. It's good for me, bad for him. We also can get some pillages here at long last. The pillages are coming to fruition. What is this? It happened again. I don't believe it. It happened again. Maybe Opango could use a quad dry room support, actually. I'll bring a quad down there to do that. Because my quads don't have a use really for a while. Oh, actually, maybe you can kill him. Hey, free kill. Yoink. Naval tradition boosted. Hey, I'll take that. Nan Madal needs a builder. Big time. Um, it's got so many improvable tiles. One more turn and the assault on Machu begins. He's actually building Machu Picchu in Machu, which I super appreciate. It kind of makes me not want to kill him. Um, however, today I woke up and I decided that blood would be for my dinner. So, you know, sometimes you wake up and you choose... A very specific and unsettling kind of violence. Pango should be a very easy cleanup here. Very, very easy cleanup. Honestly, I'm pretty sure I could kill India with these five men at arms. <laughs> I'm, pre I'm pretty sure I could kill India with these men at arms. It wouldn't even be difficult either. Right. Battering ram in position. Now look at that. That's a lot more respectable. You're taking a lot of damage here. What are you taking damage from? Regardless of what you're taking damage from, you do need to be swapped out. Bop the city. The walls on Machu have been not quite obliterated, but they have been damaged significantly. Another trade route with Bandar Brunei. I know, I know I'm only trading with Bandar Brunei, but it's the safest trade route that I have available to me. And it gives me the most money too. So for both of those reasons, that's who I'm going to trade with. Can we kill this crossbow? Perhaps. There we go. Do we want to pillage this campus or do we want to keep it? That's a tough choice. We definitely would like to unlock Niter. Which means we should build an ancient wall. And the reason we should build an ancient wall to unlock Niter is so that we can build an aqueduct, which will boost military engineering. We also need to get a pasture and a water mill. So we've got our we've got our boosts kind of laid out here actually for the push for Niter, which should then incidentally lead us to square rigging. Also, I totally forgot to change my government, and you know. It's it's a thing. I forgot. I forgore. My bad. I forgore. I I forgore. 
It's a little for gore. You know? Just a little for gore. How are you going to criticize me, okay? Listen, mistakes happen, okay? <laughs> I got distracted. <sighs> Every day, I, I slowly erode the confidence in the public in me and whether or not I actually am good at this game. Just every day, I take a little chip out of that. Just a little... Just a little chip. Now, I could liberate these cities, but I want to keep them. These are my cities. Now, technically, I didn't build this campus, so I probably shouldn't keep it. I should probably have raised the city if I were in keeping with the challenge. And now... But I'm just going to give myself the rule that, like, if I didn't place the district, it's not my fault. <laughs> I've given the old exception. I It wasn't me. Therefore, I am not to blame. End of discussion. Taking pretty big hits and counterattacks here. I don't know if I can preserve these units without breaking these walls. I might have to lose a unit. I, yeah, I think I'm just going to have to sacrifice a unit or two here to to the gods of um, combat to break this. Ooh, a medieval era great general would in fact apply to the Renaissance era, which would be perfect for my caravel. So we also, now we have a great admiral that perfectly lands us with cartography. Amazing. I need to save up some cash here. What can I sell? Sell this, give me a bit of cash, give me a bit of cash. Now we want iron? Yeah, a bit of cash there. So now we've got a huge amount of cash ready to upgrade these caravels. I'd love to get six, but I only have four galleys. Well, five galleys. No, I have six galleys. Yeah, I'd love to get six. Sorry, I, I brain fart there. Okay, I was expecting to lose a samurai there, but that was, you know, again, to be expected. The city is now obliterated. I think I pillage for the culture here. Now nah, we just go all in. I don't have enough samurai to go all in, nor do I have enough gold to reinforce. Do you know what I can buy, though? Is catapults, which I have not researched. God damn it. I might not be able to break Machu, but I can put the city under siege, I guess. And the walls are broken, which gives me time to get someone around. Amber no longer gives amenities, but I do get culture bombs. That's a nice outcome of the World Congress. Not ideal. There's Caraval Tech. Amazing. Plus two gold from fishing boats as well. So our gold is up to 150 per turn. There's a Caraval. There's a Caraval. There's a Caraval. There's a caravel. There's a caravel. There's a caravel. Six caravels on the turn that we get cartography. We're ready now to begin the naval crusade. We even have a great admiral who will boost these caravels with plus one movement speed. The caravels are actually now faster than my great admiral, which is sometimes a little bit of a problem. But we should be able to get there in two to three turns and start, boom, knocking down these cities one by one. And even getting in here to support this, this push that's going on. A little bit of pillaging. We're not going to take this with this army here. No, this will have to be taken from the other angle. But maybe we can use Man at Arms as fodder. At least defensive fodder. We really want frigates, which means we really want military engineering, which means we need to do aqueducts, which means we need to build ancient walls. I'm building ancient walls in my capital really feckin' slowly. My capital keeps losing population too, which is kind of sucks. <gasps> I forgot to plug in the build builder thing. The thing that gives me extra builder charges. Damn. Well, sure, look. That's life, isn't it? That's good old life. Bad old life? Mediocre old life. Mediocre. Yeah, mediocre. I could build a mausoleum, but it'd be 57 turns. Wouldn't I just rather build something more useful? Caravels would take too long. This city is honestly just really terrible for production. Maybe I grab my campuses now. And I think that's a totally reasonable thing to do. So I'm just hoping that the Inca aren't smart enough to put that. Yeah, okay. They did counterattack. I was hoping they weren't smart enough to do that, but they were. You go up here. Can we kill this horseman? And he's dead. There we go. Very nice. Carvels away. Quadri reams away. There we go. Look at this. This is a perfectly executed carvel timing attack. A little bit slow, I'll be honest with you, so maybe not perfect. However, the combination of like the punch here and then we redirect here with the man at arms here, this feels like a very well coordinated attack. It feels like it came together in a very organic and just like really seamless kind of way. The nice thing is we do have a campus in here. If we're thinking about the city of Opango, um, it's got lots of pearls. It's got lots of fishing boats, which is just generally great. Unfortunately, I don't have a plus three harbor in here. In fact, this city's probably going to have to build like an encampment, which is totally fine. It's like a reasonable thing to build. If I put the encampment on this tile, I will eventually get a harbor that has three adjacency. My eco right now is crazy. And, but you know what else is crazy? The fact that this episode is ending. I love you all very much, and I'll see you guys next time.
Bye-bye.